Hi everybody, my name is Debbie and welcome to my page. Uh, my page is Southern Comfort with Debbie DIY. Um, if you're new to the page, say hi in the comments, let me know you're here. Uh, I'd love to know what you've been up to, how you're dealing with the quarantine. Have you been crafting? If so, show me some of your crafts um, over on my page. Love to see them and I get inspiration from you guys also. Um, if you've been here a while, please sprinkle the video which means this, um, even if you're, if you're new, please sprinkle the video. It helps me to be able to come back and do all kinds of crafts for you guys. Before we get started, I wanted to show you something. I got my napkins today. Look how gorgeous these are. I hope you guys can see these. Um, and these are by Country by the City. Just in case you want to take a screenshot. I don't know if you can see it or not, but look at the writing in the back and this side you can see the writing better. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, I love these. And I also got this, which is gonna be the base to one of my bird uh, bird houses. This is the one I was waiting on. Um, so we're gonna do our other bird house soon. This thing is uh, cement, it's very heavy, but look at the detail in that, I just love this thing. And I'm trying to figure out a way to fit my uh, post in here and make it look okay. So that's why we're doing it in a few days. i got to figure it out. So today, now that we got that out of the way, today we are going to be making a picture frame. And we're going to be using things around the house. So we've got some sticks of cardboard here. Um, I'm making an 8 by 10 picture. So these are 10 inches long by 2 and a half inches wide. And these are eight inches long by two and a half inches wide. And I just cut them out. If you have uh, writing on it, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it together. And I'm just going to overlap them just a little bit and hot glue them. And I don't think my hot glue gun is hot yet, so. Oh, no, 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 guys. Hang on, I got St. Bernard's that are, um gonna give me a problem tonight hopefully not I have my squirt bottle handy just in case um, because they just my other my colleagues are outside and they're barking at them and they're not allowed to do that so we're just gonna overlap a little bit like this so while we're waiting let's make a flower um, we're gonna be making this flower tonight um, this is out of a uh, coffee filters and I'm going to be using my greens now these I put um, in a little bowl of water I only put a little bit of water in there I put my celery chalk paint in it and then I added just a little bit of black and you can see on some of them the black didn't dissolve others hey, I just need to add more You've got a text message. and this uh oh I didn't turn off my volume guys hold on let me turn that off sorry Usually my husband helps me, and he does all this stuff. Okay, that's off. Sorry, guys. So, I don't mind that it didn't... Uh, I used acrylic black, and it didn't really dissolve as much as I wanted it to, but it's okay. And you'll see on the bottom, um, this is the part that soaked up the paint at the bottom, that lays at the bottom. I, I love that. I love this look. I also did it with brown, as you can see, um, and I love the browns. The browns make this this one. I mean, you can make make yours any color. I'm just showing you what colors I did. And I mixed it, you know, some light, some dark. I love it. This one, I mixed some light and some dark, as you can see. You can also tea stain them, and that's what I did with these. I tea stained these, uh, the white ones. I tea stained them and they're kind of this light creamy color. And then these darker ones are these. And if you use the brown um, coffee filters, you can get an even darker brown by adding some tea stain to the brown coffee filters. It's, it's really pretty. Okay, so we're going to be making our flower. And what I'm going to do is I want a smaller flower in diameter than this one because this is my big flower we're going to use. So I want something a little bit smaller. 
So I'm just going to cut off part of it. I'm just going to go around in a circle. Terry, I know you're probably here. So now we have that. Um, what we're going to do is start just by, um, this is what I do. I go almost to the middle and I just kind of make a round, doing this backwards for me, making a round shape just like that. And we're going to, I don't know, I have a whole stack here. I don't even, I didn't even count how many. So now I'm just going to keep going around and doing the same thing. It doesn't matter if they're the same height or not. You know, just do your best. And now for the other flower, all you would do is make pointy ones, not circle, not rounded. And then you can get that other flower that I just showed you. And, then, and all you do is make them pointy. <laughs> that one's not very rounded. And you can see that it's not... Like, I'm not doing it perfect. You, you probably won't either. So, it doesn't matter. That's okay. <laughs> hey, guys. I've got three St. Bernards, um, Poppy, Nova, and Olive, and we have seven Border Collies, and I breed them, and I have to keep them separated so that there's no oopsies, um, so that we don't have Border Collie St. Bernard mixed puppies, and so they tend to bark at each other when they're outside, like there's an intruder in the yard, um, And so I just try to teach them not to do that. Okay, so now we have this. See, it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be. That's okay. What we're going to do is take our... Um, we're going to take a few of them. Just like this. Oh, hang on. I need a smaller pair of scissors to do this. There we go. I got some... Just use a small pair. I'm just going to poke a hole in the middle. And it doesn't matter about the rest of them. I'm just going to do one or two on here. On this piece of floral wire. Just to get started. Okay, so we're just going to put it on there. Put a little bit of glue. And then kind of fold it up on itself. Just like that. And as long as you have that, you really don't need this anymore. Keep this around, though, because we're going to make something else with, with that. All right, then we just start layering. Um, just put your little bit of glue. And I'm going to use the darker side up, just because I, I like that darker color. This is my color. You can do this with any color paint you have. Um... I'm trying to go more neutral because my decor is more neutral, but it's really pretty in yellow, pinks, reds, blues. I mean, you name it. It's so pretty. And my dogs are getting into the bucket of food and they're eating. So I apologize, guys. I feed openly. Um, there's always food available. Mainly because they're breeding dogs, so they need to eat pretty consistently. Oops, that's two. Hold on. And so I can't really time <laughs> when they eat, um, unfortunately. We're going to have my craft room done soon, and then you'll be able to see my face, and I'll be able to see your, well, I won't be able to see your face, but I'll be able to see what you write to me um, and what you're talking to me about, which I really look forward to that. And as you see, we're getting... It's getting there. And you can do as many as you want or as little as you want. I just like a nice full flower. So I'm going to just keep going until... Okay. Let me get some more. 
more. All right. I have quite a few here. I have enough to do two flowers, actually. So I'm just going to put a few more on. And then we'll get to our picture frame. And these flowers are going to go on the picture frame. So you actually get to see, when you make the flower, what it looks like when you use it. See how that one little dark one in there? Doesn't that make it really pretty? And you can you can squinch it, squish it up, smush it, <laughs> whatever word you want to call it. Just smush it, scrunch it, pop it. You know that game, pop it, or what is that? What's the name of that game? I think it's called pop it or something. God, my kids had that when they were younger. We used to play and laugh and laugh. I can't remember the name of it right now. Okay, just a few more. I'm get my loose here. There we go. And the reason I don't keep this on the floral wire is because it will get, you'll have a hard wire in the back and I just really don't want that. But it's a, it's a good way to start and get your little point in the back here. Okay, I think that's good. And it does get hot. <laughs> Alright, so let's fluff it up in the front here because I've been smooshing it. Just like this. And if you wanted to, you could even put something in the middle here, you know, to make it really cutesy. I just like it to be... Um, Kind of like a little snowball. I don't know what else to call it. I like it to be a little bit more just like that. Cute, right? And by cutting off part of it, you can see the difference. There's a big difference in the in the size. So it just depends on how big you want your flower to be. Okay, so let's put these away for now. And let's get started on our frame. gonna put a little bit of hot glue down that way there. And then a little bit on this side. And I'm trying to use things that we have around the house, guys, because of this trying time and nobody can go shopping. And um, I do this normally in my decor, so um, It's just something I, I prefer to do. We live out in the woods. We have a farm. Um, so we have lots of sticks, lots of pine cones, lots of acorns, lots of lots of everything. Um, so I'm always outside collecting leaves and all kinds of stuff. Okay. And the next thing we're going to use, we have plenty of here because we do have a farm. And you guys may not have um, chicken wire available to you. We do. We have rows and rows of it. Um, I can go take it off any pen at any time. So I have chicken wire. And I am just... Oh, this piece of floral wire just does not want to go away. And I'm going to be cutting it. So it's not too big. If you don't have chicken wire, you can buy chicken wire at um, most of your hardware stores have it. Even some of your um, um, Hobby Lobby and that, they have it. It's just way more expensive at Hobby Lobby. So, me, I just go out my front yard and get it. Okay, let's see what size we have here. Alright, so I'm going to cut this off here. I have way more chicken wire than I'd even like to admit to. You can also use a um, piece of scrap paper to put in the middle if you wanted. Um, gosh, there's so many things. Anything really that you want to get creative and share pictures with me of what you came up with um, and how you decided to do it. I'm just shooting you guys an idea. So 
Sorry, my chihuahua jumped down and bumped the camera. Okay. Now we have this. Just like that. I'm just going to try and bend it a little bit so it'll lay a little bit flatter. I'm just going to try to put some glue across and try and lay it in it the best I can. Just like so. Ah. Be careful, my, my glue gun is on high uh, because we're going to be gluing down sticks and I need it to be very hot. And that did not work. So, let's see. I'm going to try and hold it down in place. This is going to take a little bit longer, guys, because and I'm just going to hold it in place. And go over the top and try to get in the joints. So I'm using a whole lot more hot glue. Just gonna hold it until it dries a little bit more. What's everybody eating for dinner tonight? I made some rosemary sage chicken, which is one of our favorites. Um, and that just has rosemary, dried rosemary, dried sage, um, paprika, garlic powder, salt and pepper. It's so good, you guys. Especially on dark meat. It's really good on dark meat. And um, I made a big pan of cornbread. I could just live on cornbread alone. I made some garlic butter uh, elbow noodles. I was just in the mood for something simple. And some broccoli. And what else did I Oh, and a salad. And a big old salad. Okay, so that worked. Thank God, huh? So I'm just going to put them here along these edges. I think if we try to do it um, on thicker pieces, ouch, ouch, it might work a little better. You guys probably hear my birdies. We have uh, finch and lovebirds. And my lovebirds um, are normally pretty talkative, um, but they, they're usually asleep by the time I do my lives. But since it's getting darker later and they go to sleep when it's dark out, they're up and more talkative with the later daylight. In, in my craft room, um, where we're setting up, we're making sure to put, like, triple insulation in there. <laughs> Just so that, um, hopefully it'll block some of the noise from cats and dogs. And we call it crafting with kitties around here because we have seven cats. And I'm not a hoarder, you guys. Um, we do a lot of cat rescue. And the, the cats that we can't find homes for, we just typically keep. And so they always have a really good home. But they tend to walk through my crafts quite often. And some people get annoyed by it. Um, other people think it's funny. I think it's funny. I have to. I just have to laugh it off because really I'm in their place. This is um, their sleeping spot that they love to sleep in. And so when I start crafting, they're like, hey, get out of my spot. So I... I, I feel like I'm intruding in their in their nap place. But hopefully, as soon as my room is done, um, that will all be taken care of. Okay. This would have been easier to probably staple. I just don't have my staple gun in here. Um... Last time we used it, we were fixing the rabbit coop, and 
It's probably still outside somewhere. And you don't have to do every one of those. Um, but really, if you just have one, chicken wire is not that heavy. So if you just have one spot on each side, it'll pretty much hold it in place. <laughs> Those are my border collies barking now. Good Lord. And they are all talking to each other. Okay, that's good enough. I'm just going to put one more here and just hold it down. They're gonna start howling, you guys. Then when they do the whole house howls. <laughs> and it's mainly because we have a lot of coyotes around here and they're howling out, howling, howling outside. And so my dogs are talking to them, telling them don't come around here, this is our place. And so they usually howl two or three times a day back at the coyotes. And uh, Nothing I can do about it, to be honest. We enjoy it when they howl. We think it's funny. Just not um, during a live. It's not very funny. Okay. I just need this last one to dry before I flip it over. It's going to stick to my paper. So now we have this. Just trying to get the glue stuff off them. That's cute. All right. So I have a pile of sticks here. Um, probably more than I need, hopefully. Um, mainly because we're, I have another project I'm gonna do with sticks. And so I wanted to make sure that I have enough. And hopefully I do. I'm just going to start gluing them around. You're going to need a lot of uh, hot glue for this one. So if you do this, make sure you have plenty of hot glue hanging around. And I'm not going to glue the whole stick. I'm just going to glue two spots on it. Otherwise, you're going to use way, way too much hot glue. Hey. Hey. Lay down. All right. Crazy. It's been gloomy and cold here today. Just raining and raining. I am so tired of the rain at this point. I really wish it would stop. I took off most of the little nubbins on them. Um, some I left because they, they just look so cute. You know, like when they kind of go like that. I, I just think it's cute. This is going to go, actually, in my bathroom. On the wall in my bathroom. I have a big blank spot on my wall. Hold on, let me go stop them from barking. Cause uh, 
They're just going to continue to bark. I thought they were going to get over it, but they're not. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay, that should do it, hopefully. Usually my husband's here, and when they start barking, he goes and takes care of it. He's working late for the next three weeks, um, till 9 o'clock, and I was going to just start coming on at 9 o'clock, and then I decided not to. It's just so late. Um, by the time he gets in here and we do the live, then it's 10 o'clock before we're done, and kind of just ends up being too late for us to eat dinner and everything. So I always cook my dinner ahead of time very early and we eat it later so don't want to be eating dinner at 10 o'clock i hope you guys can see this let me jump up and see if you guys are commenting or if you can see this hi terry raining too supposed to do it again tomorrow oh lord my joints can't handle the rain. It's killing me. <laughs> it seriously hurts too much. I just told my mom today that when she has her surgery on her arm, that I am going to go down and be with her for two weeks to take care of her. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing my lives at that time. Probably not. Unless I decided to take a... Uh, a lot of crafting supplies with me and I might need to just to keep my sanity let's see um, she lives in the city and I am not a big fan of the city I used to li I grew up in the city and I just I don't like being in the city at all and I kind of ran away to be up north uh, in the in the country because the city is just too crazy for me In my head, this looks really cute, so hopefully, oops, that went flying. Um, hopefully it turns out the way I want it to. Let me just break that piece off. Oops, stay there, yeah. don't have a tree um, that you can get sticks from if you're out and about and you see a park and no one's there at the park um, because we have to keep social distancing jump out and see if they have any any sticks laying around that you can grab and if you see pine cones grab those because I'm always doing stuff with pine cones and if you follow me you'll be needing pine cones trust me I love making flowers with pine cones. to cut these actually. These aren't branch cutters, but um, I'm just using whatever I can. 
I have branch cutters in here, but they're they're really big and I don't really need big ones. using branches is they take a while. But if you just go slow and to me it's cathartic to use the branches. I just take my time to go about. I just did my uh, daughter's birdhouse. I had to finish the roof today and it looked so good. Turned out really really sweet. But I've been playing with branches for days. <laughs> Lots of branches. Did the whole roof and branches, and I did my roof and branches. So, lots of branches going on. Now, this corner over here, I'm not even too worried about this corner because this is where our flowers are going to go, right up in here. So, I'm going to concentrate more around these areas. And see if we can't cover most of it up. Yeah, that didn't work. Hold on. got uh, four more eggs in there right now. So we're going to have more babies. I think I have 11 lovebirds right now. Started out with two. <laughs> and what happened was my neighbor, I had two females and my neighbor had two birds and she decided she didn't want her lovebirds anymore. That she was going to get a canary. So she asked me if I would take them, and I said, sure, of course. Um, so hers were two boys. Um, she thought hers were females, too. She said, that I have two, two females. Well, it turned out they weren't females, they're males. So now I have a lot of lovebirds, <laughs> and they, they just continue to breed. So hopefully they don't outgrow my aviary. I, I used the whole coat closet which is, I don't know, I think eight or ten feet long by about four or five feet deep for my uh, aviary. And that was just for two birds. But <laughs> um, my, actually that and my finch. But recently we took the finch out because they were kind of getting picked on by the lovebirds. So we took them out and put them in a different pen all by themselves. And I have um, eight finch. So, it's getting kind of full in there now, with the lovebirds that are breathing. Ouch, 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 that one hurts. So I'm hoping they don't outgrow it, or I'm going to have to use another closet somewhere. <laughs> Neil's going to be like, oh my god. We have no room for clothes, only birds, um, which I think is funny, but... That's okay. Thank God he loves me, right? In all fairness, though, when we got married, it was in our vows that he has no say on what kind of animals I get. Because that was like a deal breaker for me. Is if he didn't like animals, then, uh, I mean, we live on a farm, so you can't really tell me what kind of animals I can or cannot have because we're just going to have animals. One time he went to sleep. He took a nap, and um, someone knocked on the door, and they had parakeets that they couldn't keep anymore. 
So I, they asked me if I'd take them as the stirs. They even gave me the cage and everything. And um, Neil woke up to birds. And he says, oh my God, I can't even take a nap around here. <laughs> I wake up and there's new animals everywhere. And I was like, oh yeah. That's the way I am now. I don't turn down animals ever. I've done it with rabbits. Um, he's woken up to new rabbits. Uh, we both woke up one day to um, a llama in our front yard. It wasn't an apaca. It was a full-blown llama. Someone just dropped it off without even asking us, which I don't appreciate that at all. Because no matter what, I would have took it. You know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have turned it down. But I think it's just rude to just assume we didn't have any place to, to put it, like no enclosure ready or anything. And anytime we do take animals, we make sure they have the correct enclosure, um, the correct food, you know. And we didn't have an enclosure for it. So I was a little bit ticked off about that. And a lot of people just drop kittens off on our front porch a lot. And I don't appreciate that either. That's just rude. Um, but we take them. You know, it is what it is. We've taken in um, tiger cubs. We've had monkeys. Um, we actually have a monkey rescue. So that way if anybody needs to um, place their monkeys, they know they can come here and we'll find them a home or we'll keep them, whichever, you know. Of course, we prefer to find them a home, but some animals are just hard to place, especially if they bite and stuff. And we do work with them and try to teach them, you know, not to bite and be nice. And, but it's hard on us, too. This is looking cute. Carrie, are you liking this? I think it looks really cute. I like it. Good. Chihuahua. Now I have some branches over here like these that I can use to kind of fill in these smaller places. And I'm not even going to glue them. They just kind of slide right in. So I'm just going to put them in and cut them. That one I think I might have to glue. But if you can find a yeah, you know, just try to push them in, and if they do, no need to screw them, right? And I like the randomness, like when they curl up or when they things like that. I really like that. Ooh. You okay, Pussy Dot? very worried about my mom in this surgery. It, it's a shoulder surgery. She's got tears in her shoulder. And um, she's going to be down for, I think they said three months. So I'm a little concerned about that. And I'm not sure. My sister lives very close to her and my brother. They both live very close to her. But in the beginning, she's going to need someone to be there full time. And um, my sister works, and my brother works, so hopefully by the time this corona's over, I don't have too many litters coming in, and Neil will be able to handle it here. Oh yeah, it's stuck in there really good. Neil should be able to handle all the animals and stuff in working, hopefully. Um, It's a lot of work to feed and water everybody. And my garden. That's the one thing I'm worried about is my garden. Oh, Neil is not a gardener by any means. Um, I do all the gardening. So.
So I'm a little concerned <laughs> about how my gardens will be when I get back. I've tried to teach me all over the years some gardening. Um, and you kind of learn, but, you know, watering every day is not his strong suit. So that's the main thing I would worry about is him watering everything in. This is looking cute, you guys. bit in this corner. Let me find a kind of thin one. Jerry, I don't know if you were on here yet or not, but these are the new napkins I got. Oh, you guys, I need to turn the light on. Hold on. I forgot to turn the light on. Here I am doing this all in the dark. Okay. Can you see better? <laughs> These are the new napkins I got, and they're they're from a, a company called Country by the City, and I love these. They have the writing on them, and oh, they're so pretty. And I got this in the mail. This is heavy. This is made of cement, um, but that's for the base for my uh, birdhouse that I've been waiting on. So we're gonna be doing the birdhouse here soon. My other birdhouse. And I absolutely love that. I've got one more coming, um, which is the, the Asian one I told you I ordered. That hasn't come yet. I think that's supposed to come tomorrow. Hopefully. So we'll see. Gosh, I didn't even realize it was so dark in here. Um, <laughs> now I can tell I couldn't see. I couldn't see hardly anything. Right? Oops. I'm liking it, liking it. Just a little piece for right here. And little pieces over here on the side. Olive, no. Right? I was trying to climb up on the couch over here. Which is a no, no, no. Okay, like that. Let's see. And I left the, the cardboard, the color of cardboard. Um, just because I thought if I painted it like black or something or white, it would actually be worse than actually cleaning the cardboard because of the, you know, I'm using the sticks. So I left it that color just to make sure that, um, that even if it shows through, it kind of lends to the natural color that I'm going for. The only color I have is, um, in the green, well, I have brown flowers, which is neutral, and then I'm using the sage green flowers, which is my favorite color. So, not really doing a whole lot of color in this, but you totally could. And I brought out some flowers to show you guys um, how it would look with, with some color, if you decided that's the way you wanted to go. Ugh, glue everywhere. The trick to getting rid of your glue, um, glue webs, or glue boogers as I call them, is to use either your um, blow dryer and just blow dry them and they'll just melt away, or your heat gun. The one thing with the heat gun though is you may melt all your glue if you're not careful and then your sticks all fall off. 
So, just something to think about when you're doing it. Cute, cute, cute. I'm gonna have to be. I'm gonna be picking up sticks in here for days. <laughs> As I'm clipping them, they're going pew pew all over the place. Let's see. I need some small stuff. Here we go. Need something small, but not too small. Yeah, I'm telling you, you're going to be using a lot of glue. This is a ton of glue on this. I'm just trying to push them underneath uh, things. Just to cover up, and I don't even know if you guys can see these spots I'm trying to cover up or not. But I can see them. So. That's our beloved Chihuahua, Bridget. Bridget. Hold on, guys. Hold on, I gotta do damage control here. So, okay. Sorry, guys. This is a project you guys could do with your kids, too. Um, but you would have to do quite a bit of the hot gluing. Unless they're a little bit older kids. See, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is a little spot I'm trying to fill in over here. And then we got to work on this corner here. This, though, I'm not, I'm not too worried about. You can see our flowers are going to go over here. So we're going to have some flower action going on on this side. But I don't know if I'm going to use one or two or three flowers. I'm not sure yet. <coughs> I'd like to use all three of them, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough room or not. Go lay down. No. Go lay down. They are really seeing my other dogs outside. And they are upset about it. And it's not because they want to hurt them or anything. They just want to go outside and play with them. But they can't. Unfortunately. Pretty difficult though to keep different breeds away from the other breeds. It's it's not easy. I don't believe in uh, mixing breeds though. I I I now don't get me wrong. I think some of the cutest puppies are the ones that aren't purebred. But I just believe in um, saving the the breeds because they're becoming almost extinct. The purebreds are. So and I've been breeding for thirty years. Or 30, almost 35 years. Ugh. It's been a long time. And I used to breed uh, Pomeranians and Chihuahuas. For a long time. Um, and I loved it. I loved my Poms, loved my Chihuahuas. But when I came down with my medical issues, um, I had to make some hard choices. And decided to go with the bigger dogs because they were less... Believe it or not, they are less grooming, they are less maintenance, um, so yeah, I had to make a hard choice, and I always, always love St. Bernard's, and Border Collies are like the smartest dogs you could ever get, 
they are super intelligent. And I always tell people with Border Collies, you do not have to teach them what to do. You have to teach them what not to do. Because they already know everything they need to know. They are extremely smart. And uh, they're, they're huge people pleasers. So they love to please their humans. And St. Bernard's are smart too. But they like to let you think they're dumb. Just so they can get away with stuff. Uh, they think they're too cute. And they can just get away with stuff because they're so cute. Which doesn't work with me. But they get over on Neil quite a bit. Neil's, Neil just starts laughing at them. And I'm like, no, they're not allowed to do that. And he just cracks up and laughs and laughs. And he ends up on the floor giggling with them. And they're licking his face. And he, Neil's such a big baby with the dogs. He, he is. He's a sucker. Which I'm kind of glad Neil and I never had kids together. Because he's that dad that would... uh. The kids would just say, aw, can I have this? And he'd be like, sure, you know. And he helped me raise my kids, my three kids. And they call him dad, and they love him dearly. He raised them since they were, gosh, 10 and 11 years old. And my son was 18. My son is 32 now. Um, but he did help me raise my girls. And he... They got over on him quite a bit because he just is that guy that doesn't like to say no. Um, he doesn't ever say no to me, so why would he with the kids? You know, he's just he's a good guy. He is a good guy. Got lucky with that one. But like I said, I'm glad we didn't have more kids because, lordy, I could just see him on the floor giggling with the kids. Letting them get full of chocolate. Because the kids, um, he would drive them to school. Because we, we live out in the country. And the bus stop is 10 miles away. So Neil would drive them to school every morning. And he, <laughs> he would stop and get them their cappuccino from the gas station um, every morning. And I would say, don't let them drink cappuccino. They're not allowed to drink cappuccino. And he would, every morning, they would just get get over on him. And they'd say, please, please. And he would just melt. I mean, just melt. We laugh about it now, but back then I was like, don't give them cappuccino. And after school, um, when I would pick them up, I would take like a bowl of spaghetti or something, you know, something for them to eat because they would just be starving. And they couldn't wait to get home to eat. So I would always take a bowl of something. But he would stop in the, into the gas station and they have um, like fried uh, mozzarella sticks and chicken fingers and stuff that the kids wanted instead of spaghetti, you know. And so he would stop and buy them that. And I'd always say, don't do that. Because then they ask me and I tell them, no, they're not getting it. And they also had a... Used to make me so mad they had kids at school that would um eat their lunch. And the and the girls would never say anything. They were so sweet. They would never say anything to them about it. You know, they just give them their food. And so they would always come home just starving. And I finally asked them, Why are you so hungry? And uh, they said there were some kids at school that didn't have lunch money. And so they would give them their lunch. And I taught them to be givers, and maybe shame on me, I don't know. But I did. I taught them to be givers, and those kids will give you the shirt off their back. I went to visit my daughter in Delaware. Um, I, I usually go twice a year to go visit her and the grandkids. And um, when I went down there, my daughter had just started working at Walmart, and... One of the girls there was talking to me about Heather and said that her first, this girl, this woman's first day of work, um, she didn't have any money for lunch or anything. And Heather saw her sitting there by herself. So Heather went up and gave her $20 and said, here, why don't you come to lunch with us? Because I guess Heather offered for her to go to lunch and the, the woman said, I don't have any money. 
And so Heather just gave her $20. Didn't even know her. And I said, yep, that's my, that's my kids. They're great kids. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. This is what we have so far. I think I need a little bit here. And that's, and a little bit here. But the rest of that, I'm not worried about this over here. Let me get one more. I need a little piece. From there. Two more pieces, guys. And we will be going over this with my heat gun um, to help get rid of all this glue that's sticking out. I think I need one piece here, just down here. Checking my edges to make sure that a lot of that, um, this is what we have. Really cute, right? Let me go see if you guys are asking questions or anything before I continue on. We're almost done, though. Um, trying to find the napkins from my mother's 80th birthday. Something for my little sister. Oh, what kind are they? What kind of napkins are they, Terry? Okay, so. Ooh, that one's really big. I don't know if I'm going to be using that one. Let's see. So this is what I'm thinking. I've got my two flowers here. These little ones. I've got some leaves. So I have these. And I have these. So I'm not sure... Like, let's see. We have that. Okay, you guys tell me yes or no. Either these green leaves or something a little bit more delicate. Like those green leaves. Let me know. I'm leaning towards these ones. But instead of these flowers, I also brought out some uh, some pansies to show you like the difference. Um, you could put any type of flower you wanted on here. In the middle of these, I just took some tin foil and rolled it up into a ball. And then cut up my um, Spanish moths and hot glued it on into this. But instead of doing that, you could totally put one of these in the middle, you know, or a yellow one in the middle. Super cute, right? I just like my, my natural colors. So, but you can do so much with this. Sky's the limit. We're going to be making some curly cues here in a minute, too. Um, I made these already, so we're going to make another one. Because I want three. At least three, maybe six. I don't know. Let's see. Hmm. Paper napkins with shamrocks and butterflies. Ooh, those sound pretty. Ooh, those sound really pretty. All right, I think I'm going to go with these ones, guys, because I just think the other ones are too big. It's much too big. a couple of these off. Okay. Okay, okay. Maybe something like so. And then something like so. So we have that. Now I'm thinking just one flower. I don't even know if I want two. Yes? No? Is it too much with two? Or should I do two? I could even squish it up underneath over here and just kind of squish it in. I think I'm liking just one. 
I think I like just this one flower. Maybe if I'm gonna do just one, maybe I'll do this flower. Oh no, that's way too big. That one's too big. I think I like that. So let me get my flower put in here. I need my, uh, my greenery stuck down in here. You guys, I cannot wait to be in my craft room. This is driving me crazy having to sit here at this table and not be able to do it the way that I really want to. But just talk to you guys and interact with you guys. All right. I'm gonna put a good amount of glue on this one. So I can have it. Make sure it touches on some of these spots. On this. Poppy. She's pushing her bowl around. Okay, I wanted to show you guys how to make these little curly cues. Um, they're so cute. And they do take a little bit of practice to learn how to, how to make them. So let me show you that. Because once you start making them, you're going to love them. And I made my little piece of them. Um... Where did he go? Hold on, guys. Oh, here it is. Okay. So we're going to take one of our one of our green ones here. And it doesn't matter what color you use. I'm just going to use the green because it's going with... The other ones I did with my uh, tan coffee filter. I can do this with just about anything. But... Just gonna tear it into some pieces, long strips. Get out my mat patch right here. And I'm just gonna dip my finger in there and just kind of rub it on. Whoops. Should probably move this out of the way. And I'm just gonna start turning it. like that and as I go I'm just gonna put just a little bit more glue just to hold it down and you just keep spinning and then you kind of let your glue dry and that's all there is to it and I'll show you how to make it to curly cue at the end here And you got to make sure you continue to uh, twist the same way or you'll untwist it all the way up. I've done that before, which is funny, but see, it's, it's wanting to come undone. All you got to do is twist it. And I'm going to put just a little bit more glue on this. Make sure it gets nice and gooey. which also helps it to be a little more stiff um, when it dries. So it curly cues easier. Hey, quit, 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 quit. She's taking her nose and pushing her food bowl all around the room, trying to bury her food. She loves to bury it, I don't know why. She's one of those dogs that buries food. But she 
trying to save it for later. But I keep food out all the time. So, see, it just wants to keep coming undone. And it's going to keep doing this to you, and that's okay. Just keep going back and twisting. I'm not out of the frame, guys. <laughs> Can't see. A little more glue. And you might have to just go and readjust, and that's okay. And it takes a minute to um, kind of get comfortable with doing this. Because when I first started doing this, it took me... I don't know, two or three tries, I guess, to um, kind of get it. But once your glue starts to dry, it won't keep coming unraveled on you. See, this is what we have so far. Let's do another piece. I don't think I need a whole lot because we're coming up on the end here. And if anybody knows an easier way to do this, please let me know. Um, this is just the way I have always done it. So I have some curly cues, um, but they're Christmas ones. They're sparkly and they're red and they're white. And um, I don't have the colors I need, so I'm just making my own. Okay, now we're at the end and I'm just going to put some more glue here. Done with that. And I don't know if I'm even going to use these, um, but I just want to show you. I think I might. I'm not sure though. Okay, so you just start back here on your finger, just like this. And then just start wrapping it. Like so. Of course, you want this to dry a little bit before you start messing with it. That's what you have. Your little curly cube. So now I have my tan ones and my green one because I was going to use a green flower. But I think I kind of want to just put one or two up here and then one down over here. Just like that. So I'm just going to give me some glue here. I'm going to stick it in over here. Just like so. And then I'm going to put this one on this side. Let's see. I hear my honey coming in. Yep, there he is. And that one. And that one. Hi, honey, you're home. Hi, honey, I'm home. I'm across the way. Oh, look at all the greenery. Yes. Greenery. Greenery. Okay.
And in design, whenever you do something, you should always do it in threes. So this is my this is what we have. Uh, down a little bit, yeah. I think so. Yep, there you go. See, I'm so happy when he's here. This is so hard to do without him. And I'm just going to put a hanger on the back with some jute. Um, let me do that. And I thought about putting like a welcome sign. This one's too big, obviously, but you could put a welcome sign on it. Um, you could put a bow up here. It'd be really cute. And keep in mind, just simple. But just giving you guys some ideas of what you can do with it. You want to spruce it up a little bit. Mm. Let me get my jute here. I'm just going to put a hanger on it. I don't want my hanger to show, so I'm going to do it down here a little bit further. Just like that. really getting into the blue. I'm going to pull this down a little bit further because I don't want it to show off the top. Just like that. There we go. You know Terry's here, right? Yes. Yep. I even said before I looked, I know Terry's here. Mm -hmm. I know that. But I've been jumping up and trying to read. Um, she, last she wrote I, was about the shamrock uh, napkins from. I think yeah. Have you done a search for them, Terry? Um, maybe pull up Ireland uh, napkins. That's what I would do. Well, she said something about that. Yeah. She said did you order them from Ireland? Did she find them already? I thought she said she was looking for them. Um, that she had for her mom's birthday. Or she wants them for her mom's birthday. Paper napkins with shamrocks and butterflies. We actually ordered them from Ireland. Oh, okay. More delicate. Ooh. Well, I have to look at the more delicate leaves in with the flowers you made. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what you did there. That does look good. Okay, and you can squish up your flower, leave it straight if you want. And I, let me show you a flower I was trying to replicate when I made that flower. It's one that's in my living room. Um, oh, she had them saved at home. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay, she, good. She already had them. This is the flower I was trying to replicate, is this flower. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get the color exactly right, um, but close enough. I, I love this flower. Okay, guys, um, we're going to call it a night, and we're going to eat some dinner and get fat and full, mm -hmm. and then go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, sprinkle the love. Um, which means this, if you're watching this on the replay, please sprinkle, um, it allows me to keep coming back and helping you guys and, um, trying to bring you guys new ideas. Terry, Have a great night. Terry says, mom just turned 88, so the napkins are from her 80th birthday. Ooh. So, so she had them, yeah. Wow. Yep. She said, looks awesome, Debbie. Thank you. Yep. Have a great night, guys.
Bye. Bye now.